What's up, kittens? Ooh, ooh, ooh. It's Sunday, and I had a delightful day. I I'm really enjoying this experience because I really do just love to learn. And in addition to learning, I really love to do research. So being able to take all the things that I already embody and integrate and I'm currently learning and then being able to find ways to um, find like other research that like supports or other, uh, I'm a big person for like references. I like to be able to say, you know, this is what I have to say, this is my perspective, and then here are some other, here's some other evidence that supports or contrasts with what I'm saying, whatever it may be. Um, yeah, so today is September 3rd, and I am excited to, I'm doing a little dance, I'm so excited, uh, to just kind of dive right in and talk about some more fun stuff about Operation Unbothered, how I'm maintaining my growth mindset in this journey of spiritual awakening from my spiritual amnesia. Every day I am relearning, reprogramming, and integrating information that expands my divine knowledge to be in better alignment multidimensionally with source, as well as better understand the reflections in my 3D. In Guardians of the Galaxy, I linked the scene below of what I'm talking about in the comments. Groot is Baby Groot. And first he's a potted Baby Groot. He's doing his little, his dance moves like this. He's dancing and figuring out his new bodysuit. And then throughout the movie, he continues to grow. Thankfully, he keeps the dancing alive and remaining curious as he relearns uh, what it means to be in his universe. And... I want to just say be like Groot and embrace the evolution and the opportunity to begin again from a new perspective. Uh, it, in my opinion, it is a blessing to, for all of the times that I have been able to begin again and embrace a new perspective, embrace a new part of myself, embrace a new timeline. I have two cats, Marsha P. Johnson and James Baldwin, and I thought Marsha, Marsha was about to do something that she was not supposed to be doing, so I got a little distracted there. Um, so backing it up, I have, I am in a lot of gratitude for all the times that I have been, that have been bestowed upon me to actually be able to begin again, um, whether that is in my mindset or my actual living experience or in my career, or schooling, whatever it may be, I am always, yes, I have always had a grateful heart and mind about that because I understand that it is a privilege to one, recognize when that is an opportunity to, that can be taken and also to have that opportunity to move forward and be in that evolution. And today I'm gonna talk a little bit about um, this game of life, a growth mindset, and planned ignoring. In this game of life, my soul has agreed to the rules of engagement to come to earth side. And now in my awakened state of mind, I've accepted the mind game of realigning myself, not with myself in the secular dimension, rather aligning myself with source as I am a fragment of a greater whole. And that now I desire to be fulfilled by returning back to the whole and back to my original state of being, which is a dope radiant being of light and being one with everyone, being one with source. Uh, I have accepted the truth in my universe that upon arrival earth side, that my conscious mind or ego separated itself from source. And of course, in miracles, it states, in a sense, the ego was a self-made attempt to perceive yourself as you wished rather than you are. Meaning the ego has accepted a fear-based outlook and actively attempts to be disconnected from the whole by disregarding the oneness with all the other souls having a human experience for the purpose of its own validation, which in my life has caused low self-esteem, substance abuse, emotional shopping, being a mean girl, gossiping, 
and judgment of all that I didn't know or did not align with my rigid perception and which I also want to give myself space and grace for the the concept of a rigid perception also being at that time that was my highest aligned frequency and I do anticipate that as I am where I am now is not where I'm going to be tomorrow in a month in a year in 10 years that I will continue because I have decided to take the identity of <laughs> confirmation um I have taken the identity of I am the type of person who has a growth mindset and I will continue to evolve that is my goal um until I until I leave this game essentially and uh what was I say oh I'm doing the same thing I did yesterday I put all my notes on the computer which I'm very grateful for I made sure the phone was not covering any words I just forgot where I was <laughs> Um, and then also that for me, that it was going back to all of these, uh, I would say lower frequency mindsets and behaviors that for me, this was a total human first perspective and rather than having it be a soul first perspective. And it was my ego's attempt to be satisfied and aligned with the secular world, um, as a way of being. And for me, and I've shared this before that when I look over and I think about all these things of the low self-esteem, the substance abuse, uh, being a mean girl and gossiping and judgment and all of those things that I experienced, I now know that those are things I don't want to engage in. I had the experience to, as Abraham Hicks says, I've had the experience of contrast. Now I know that that's not in alignment with me. I've already been there, done that. And because I'm not in alignment with it, I don't need to bring that forward in the ne in the new timelines that I am moving forward with because it's not in alignment with me. And uh, A Course in Miracles continues to say, you have every right to feel anxious as you perceive yourself. That is why you cannot escape from fear until you know that you did not and cannot create yourself. Meaning my ego, when it was in the driver's seat, thinks it's the coolest around this dimension and is the sole creator without recognizing the secular world is an illusion of false reality. And that this dimension is simply a projection of the quantum fear field through desires and I would say fears as well, through desires, fears, emotions, and reflections. These experiences, though, add up to the internal illumination of this dimension, which then provides opportunities like this for myself to share out my lived experiences for the purpose of speaking a language to the souls assigned to me to activate their own illumination of awakening. And when I say languages, I don't mean necessarily Spanish or English or Mandarin as an example. I'm referring to the actual soul frequency, or as I like to say, the spiritual radio station that is the sound that will resonate most with those who I am called to activate. And this can be a language such as using terms from quantum physics, the culinary world, sports. It literally is whatever the, whatever terms, whatever experiences the soul will recognize with the least resistance is what I mean by language. And some of the things that I do to continue on this journey of, of evolution is having a growth mindset versus a fixed mindset. And Carol S. Dweck, who is the author of Mindset, How You Can Fulfill Your Potential Outlines, steps to take a, to rewind. She takes, <laughs> she outlines the steps to take to transform a fixed mindset into a growth mindset. And I actually found a direct link to the PDF of the book, which I linked below for you if you want to take a little peek about it. And she states that every one of us has a journey to take from the fixed mindset into the growth mindset. And I really appreciate when people have uh, offer committed action steps or a, ingredient, uh, the, a recipe with ingredients of, okay, this is the outcome that you're looking for. These are the things to do. So she shares, it starts by accepting that we all have both of these mindsets, both the growth and the fixed mindset. Then we learn to recognize what triggers our fixed mindsets. 
She gives the examples of failures, criticism, deadlines, or disagreements. And for me, that really is that sense of one, embracing the duality within myself of, yes, I have a fixed mindset. And yes, I have a growth mindset. And with free will in this dimension, I get to choose which direction that I want to go in. And by her saying to be able to observe what the triggers are, that for me is a way to activate my free will in the sense of headed towards a growth mindset because now I know, hmm, I can remain really curious about if I am recognizing inside of myself, oh, why am I feeling this certain way? For example, with when if I feel like I'm being criticized, I normally want to shut down. Um, I experienced a lot of criticism growing up and throughout my current, my up-to-date lifespan. And for me, I know what the, that feels like in my body. I want to shut down or I want to... Uh, depending on if I feel that I can talk back without severe consequences, then sometimes I want to just verbally assault people. And for me, that has been a uh, my own learning journey of keeping my mouth closed, recognizing that if someone is criticizing me, that most likely it is a inner projection of them onto me and I don't have to accept that as the experience. And now I don't mean that I do not take criti- that I don't accept criticism. It's a lot of not what is said, it's how it is said. And for me, because of what my childhood experiences have been, there is a certain tone that will activate me wanting to fight back or just completely shut down. Opposed to if someone is speaking to me with nonviolent communication, I am able to receive in that feedback because for me, it becomes feedback, a positive experience rather than criticism, a negative experience. The next she says, and we come to understand what happens to us when our fixed mindset or persona is triggered. And she has some prompt questions. Who is this persona? What's its name? What does it make us think, feel, and do? How does it affect those around us? So in internal family systems, IFS, they talk about having these representatives that inside of a bodysuit, there are many different components of a person or soul rather, and identifying those representatives and what is their purpose. So in this sense of there's a purpose for a fixed mindset, what does that fixed mindset do and support a person when they're being activated or necessarily being called to the driver's seat to take over a particular experience. Maybe it is that someone is feeling, maybe for me, like going back to the criticism, if I'm feeling criticized and I am unable to access my self-regulation tools, perhaps my fixed mindset is going to pop up in front to do the talking for me until I am able to internally self-regulate to be able to say like, okay, hold on, that was a lower frequency response. Let me pivot and be able to have this come from my higher frequency self. Um, Then she goes to, importantly, we can gradually learn to remain in a growth mindset place despite the triggers as we educate our persona and invite it to join us on a growth mindset journey. And I immediately popped in my head, this is one of my favorite quotes that I have really just cemented into my frontal lobe, Lori Harder says, the universe is never testing you. It's giving you the opportunities to be who you say you are. Theory is theory until given the opportunity to put it into application. So in this sense that it is a positive thing to be triggered in 3D, in the secular world, because it allows the soul to know, yes, I have the tools to be able to be the person that I say that I am. If I'm saying I'm the person that has a growth mindset, then that means I am able to be in the variety, in behavior science, it's called generalizing. Like I'm able to generalize that skill across many different people, many different experiences, different environments to know that it is something that is now a part of me rather than something that is just a theory. And she ends with, ideally, we'll learn more and more about how we can help others on their journeys too. And for me, helping others is by continuing to stay both disciplined and committed to my journey to spend more time in a growth mindset rather than a fixed mindset. 
and also to be able to role model what does it mean to have a growth mindset? What does it mean to be, if I am finding myself that I'm in a fixed mindset, how am I able to stop, pause, recognize what's going on, and then pivot to be able to move forward into the direction that I say I am a person who has a growth mindset. And in order for me to align with source and to accept the mindset that all souls having a human experience are actually fragments of a greater whole, I have needed to continue to and actively adjust my mindset to allow for this new information to be received and then integrate it into my life. At the end of a conversation between Krishnamurti and David Bohm, Bohm states, Then to reach the unconscious, you have to have an action which doesn't directly appeal to the conscious. And Krishnamurti replies, yes, I think that is affection. That is love. When you talk to my walking, to my waking consciousness, it is hard, clever, subtle, and brittle. And you penetrate that, say all right, keep your own beastly little stuff, and you penetrate it with your look, with your affection, with all that feeling you have. That operates, nothing else. And for me, this really just resonates with that idea of, figuring out what is that ra- that spiritual radio station and allowing that to be received, both being given and being received by somebody. And here Krishnamurti is essentially saying that when, it's with, when it comes from a place of love, that allows all the, the soul and the ego to be able to receive the information without feeling like it's being criticized, without it being attacked. So a quick summary. The ego and the fixed mindset do not want to surrender to the light. It is an active choice to choose a growth mindset, to choose love and light over fear and ego. And when communicating with others about this topic, speaking in a language or spiritual radio frequency that is not challenging to the ego will support the receiving of these alternate possibilities. And this really flows into the idea of releasing fear and darkness to embrace the light. In A Course in Miracles, Uh, Principle 22 states, miracles are natural expressions of total forgiveness. Through miracles, you affirm your acceptance of God's forgiveness by extending it to others. People believe that what they cannot see does not exist and their physical eyes cannot see in the dark. This is a very primitive solution and has led to denial of the spiritual eye, which always depends on light. For me, I integrate this into my life of there will always, in this secular dimension, there are a lot of, there's a lot of darkness. And one absolute truth that I believe in is that light, there's light everywhere. There will, there's always a possibility of joy and gratitude and connection with others. And the ego does not necessarily want to go in that direction if it is feeling that it is not going to be beneficial. And that growth mindset supports with identifying if I am finding myself in that egocentric mindset or trying to take an action that is from the ego and not from my higher self, giving myself the space and grace and also being able to figure out like, okay, why is this happening? Why am this is what I'm choosing? How can I turn it around to be in most alignment with my highest uh, self really? Also, that the 3D is a reflection of past choices, decisions, mindsets, and actions. And to be like baby Groot and keep on dancing and maintaining a high frequency, even if the universe you're in seems to be under attack or in a state of mass chaos. In Applied Behavior Analysis, or ABA, there is a behavior intervention called plan ignoring. It is the active ignoring of a behavior that can be considered to be maladaptive attention-seeking behavior. Essentially, a behavior that is no longer wanted by either the caregiver or deemed socially unacceptable is put on notice through intentionally ignoring it for the purpose of trying to get rid of it, allowing that to not be um, a behavioral communication style that will achieve, typically the person is doing whatever that behavior is, is to get attention. Sometimes like with my cats, uh, James and Marsha, when they are wanting my attention, they will start, <laughs> they like to, to nosh on anything they can find. 
So sometimes they'll just start like noshing on something. And I'm like, dude, what are you doing? And really what happens like with Marsha, she flops down on her back. She was just trying to get my attention. She knows that um, if she, she knows that if there's a behavior that she shouldn't be doing, these cats are very smart. I'll tell you, they're very smart. Doing a behavior that she shouldn't be doing that I'm going to stop when I am doing to interrupt what she's doing because, well, I don't want her noshing on everything. I do want to add a disclaimer here that this behavioral practice is debated in the applied behavior analysis community as being more harmful than humane due to the actual ignoring of the behavior, which can sometimes equate to ignoring the person exhibiting the behavior. And um, individuals who identify as autistic have spoken out about how demoralizing this planned ignoring can be. So I do want to just share that because in the sense of what it is that I am trying to convey um, of this particular planned ignoring, the purpose is for the application for Operation Unbothered is having this mindset of planned ignoring to ignore the details of the 3D that do not support the illumination or evolution or the manifestation of a desired outcome. Uh, Neville Goddard talks about that in this dimension, there is a delay of the mind, of what the mind wants, what the manifestation desires are, and then what that mani what manifesting it actually here in the 3D. So the sense is that if I really want a chocolate bar and I'm saying to myself, I want a chocolate bar and I don't see one in my immediate reality, it doesn't mean that the chocolate bar isn't coming. Uh, time, space, reality is needed sometimes to allow for these things to come through. And I was actually watching this really, I found a new YouTuber. I'm like obsessed, want to binge watch all of her stuff. I'll link her below. Um, she is a PhD chemical engineer studying in Cambridge, I believe. And her whole page is about, her whole YouTube channel is about combining science and spirituality. And she was talking about from the quantum physics part of view, uh, point of view rather, that the manifestation, that emotions are the energy that is needed to move the thoughts and the details in the quantum field to bring them into the 3D. So I highly recommend watching her videos. They're so cool. She has visuals. Everything is very digestible. I was very excited. I literally said, universe, I'd like to find a new YouTuber that will support me on this evolution and, and her page popped up and I'm glad that I clicked on it. Um, okay, and then also for the planned ignoring is really helpful, at least in my universe, it's been really helpful. Um, when disengaging from individuals who have low frequency behaviors such as narcissism and a fixed mindset. And I, I say this with the caveat of just because someone has a fixed mindset doesn't mean that they're not necessarily aligned. Again, it goes back to that sense of uh, being a role model or illuminating other people on their own journey. However, I know that when I take decisive action, it's important for me that if I decide, like through cord cutting or just something happens in that energetic exchange that is no longer fresh water nourishing into my universe, that I'm able to say thank you and no thank you and, and cut the cord there. So the planned ignoring is uh, a way to support somebody in the beginning stages because in my opinion, cutting people off and removing and unzippering from their universe and having them unzipper from my universe, in the beginning it wasn't so easy. Uh, an example that comes to mind, and this isn't necessarily, well, yeah, this is actually my experience of I've had in the past, past partners where for whatever reason, I just, even if I was like, I'm done, something would come up. And then I was like, we're zippered again. So it wasn't like a definitive answer. So with planned ignoring, I'm planning to ignore the urges planning to ignore the ego, planning to ignore the behavioral choice to make contact with that person. If I'm saying that the energy exchange is over, then I can use planned ignoring to help me in that initial first bit of time, depending on 
whatever the intensity of that energy connection is, I can use that strategy as a strategy to get over that initial like hump of another term in uh, behavioral science is an extinction burst, where if there's a behavior that somebody is trying to get, uh, have someone stop doing, normally, <laughs> I like to say they throw all their whole toolbox at that experience to get that person to react. So for an example would be a child who's having a temper tantrum. If, if a kid is told that they cannot have the iPad, then maybe they'll start with the, the favorite mom, 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 mom. You know, that's sort of like nagging at the mom or the caregiver to get that iPad. And if the mom is still being like, no, it's not time for the iPad then maybe the next behavior is then the behavior is going to kind of go up a notch and maybe now the child is stomping their feet and if that's not working you know the, the kid is going to depending on what their cognitive uh development is they are most likely going to go through all of the different things that they could possibly do that has worked in the past to see if they're going to be able to get that ipad and that whole that behavior patterning that is all those back-to-back -back things that's the extinction burst and in that case, that's where the planned, planned ignoring is really helpful when I'm talking about just unzippering energies from my universe, because even if that person is having those, having an extinction burst, I've already decided in my decisive action that I'm planning on ignoring it and I will not respond to that. And also do you want to just add that it is very easy to block people. And that is also another strategy that is very helpful in the planned ignoring because then there are no visual cues or prompts that are coming through into my universe because, well, I've unzippered. There is no way to come through. So there's that. Um, quick summary of all of that. Focusing on strategies that are in alignment with one's spiritual awakening and overall growth. And ignoring those that are not, which are inclusive of people, places, things, mindsets, behaviors, really can support the evolution and higher frequency of a person. Okay. So, my conclusion here. And yes, I came up with like a new format that was that's really helpful for me to like stay focused and on task because I realized, I was thinking in my head like, I mean, I do watch a lot of long form YouTube uh like podcasts and interviews, it's, I, I enjoy that sort of like very in-depth, deep dive of different topics. However, I also want to be mindful of people's time and energy and for my own self, be more succinct with what I am saying and how I'm sharing it. So that's why I'm going to say in conclusion, <laughs> um, embrace your inner baby group. No matter what is going on around you, stay focused, stay dancing, and continue to listen to Don't Music to navigate the consistent growth spurts of awakening. When in doubt, stay curious and go and go choose a growth mindset rather than a fixed mindset to create a flow of receiving new information. Even if it doesn't immediate re immediately resonate, maintaining the space and grace to be an observer, which can offer either a new option of being or contrast of what not to do depending on the alignment with one's divine purpose and being obedient to source. If you don't know, go inward and ask source for guidance. That's like, for me, one of the coolest things that I have learned on this journey is all I need to do is this, close my eyes and literally say, source, help me. I don't know what to do. And for me, I, I learned this a lot from Stephanie P. Smith. Um, I think she's a, for me, she's been a really great um, expander and role model of this spiritual experience of just speak, like how I'm talking now is how I communicate with my ancestors, how I communicate with my spirit guides, how I communicate with source of this like very matter of fact of like conversational style of closing my eyes and be like, source, I really need some help right now. And then be like, blah, 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 blah. This is what I need help with. Um, or calling on a particular ancestor and being like, I know you know this, come on through and give me some support here. So I do encourage that, encourage you that if you are in a situation where you're just like not sure what to do, to just take that moment to go inward, to connect with your highest self, to connect with source, connect with whoever your, your guiding 
energy is to get that additional reinforcement from the multidimensional space um, rather than relying just here in the secular world. Most of the time I've found out that when I'm trying to find answers directly in the spirit, in the secular dimension is not in alignment with my highest self. It's normally very ego driven. That's just my lived experience. Let me know if you agree. And then remember these order of operations. One, the soul has chosen to play in the game of life. Two, the soul has chosen to come earthside to see what all this free will is about. Three, experience the experiences. Four, be illuminated by others' journeys back to the light. Find your spiritual radio station. See who is broadcasting. What is your soul, who is your soul attracted to to learn more and to continue growing? Five, share both the lived experiences of the free will adventures and the personal journey of illumination. Six, continue to heal oneself as an example for others to do the same within their own universe. And I want to stress here that be an example, be a role model. Don't be a know-it-all. I, I definitely experienced, I have been the know-it-all. And I use that loosely. And I always think of, <laughs> Bethany Frankel in uh, from the Real Housewives of New York where oh gosh I'll see if I can find a clip to insert here because it is something that has stuck with me for a really long time because I think it's really funny where she's like maybe I do know it all and my secular self has that I think that resonates so much because my ego was like yeah we do know it all and honestly no I don't know it all and I embrace this growth mindset. I love learning. I love researching and I love being able to learn from other people and their own experiences. So for me, it's like, I'm not telling people what to do. I'm like, this is a suggestion. This is a consideration of what I have done, what I have experienced. Let me know what you think. Did it work for you as well? And then number seven, support the ongoing upgrade of the collective energy and to, uh, Whoa, what did I even write here? Okay, support the ongoing upgrade of the collective energy to the force of love and light rather than darkness and ego. This has been fun. I'm very happy how. I know I did stumble a little bit. You know me, I'm not editing it out. So it is what it is. I'm a real soul having a human experience right here, right now. And I wanna say with that, everyone, I wish you a grand rising, a grand afternoon, a grand evening, wherever you are in the world when you see this video. I hope that it brings you blessings and abundance, love and light, and I'm so thankful for your time. Um, it is a precious commodity in this world, and I am just grateful that you have decided to spend it with me, and I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Remember, keep dancing, keep that dough playlist, and have a delightful rest of your day. Bye. Just say it to my face. Like, I, I honestly, you know a lot, of, you're a know-it-all. There you go. I think you're a know-it-all. Maybe I know it all. I don't think anybody <laughs> knows it all. Well, I may know <laughs> it all. So if you would like to know any of it all, come to me and I'll tell you. So that should be the name of my book. That's Know It All. Know it all.